Father, we bow before you in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather together. We're asking your blessing upon the cantata this evening. Uh, please help the choir members to uh, do their very best, Lord, and help the message of the songs to come through. Help those doing the drama portion of the cantata, Lord, to remember their lines. And again, Lord, that the message of this cantata would come through to each and every heart tonight. Uh, use it, please, to help us, to encourage us, and to challenge us this evening. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.
little baby go to sleep. Close your eyes and don't you cry. Gently rest your tiny Christmas had always been Elizabeth McLaw's special time of year. Her tiny cabin perched on a hill in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia was a world away from Bethlehem of Judea. And this year, 1848, was far removed from the first Christmas hundreds of years ago. But as she cuddled her newborn son, born on Christmas Eve, she imagined she knew a little of how Mary must have felt. She gazed into a flickering fire on the hearth, and her thoughts drifted to her husband, who would never know his own son. He had been a fine, hard-working man. He had hopes of becoming a doctor till the money ran out. Disappointed, he worked as a farmer until his patience ran out. Drinking brought a change in him. And Elizabeth had often been the object of his anger as he returned home drunk. He must not have been able to stand the thought of another spring planting. She wasn't sure if it was the farm or her that reminded him of his failures. Whatever the cause, he was gone. He joined the army and went out west to fight the Indians. In the letters she had received, they said he had died as a brave soldier should. They said she would receive a little money from time to time, but that was months ago. Elizabeth thought she'd never know happiness again, till now. Again, she studied the little infant in her arms. Emmanuel Christmas McClaw. Such a big name for such a little fella. You're not the same as baby Jesus, but my God's going to watch over you too. Maybe he'll send some angels to sing for you. Can you hear them? <coughs> you know what they're saying? Glory to God, glory to God.
Emmanuel Christmas McLaw. He became known simply as Manny. He went from being a little baby to a little boy to a little man in just a few years. He had to. He was the man of the house, and he was serious about his position. Wherever Manny was, there was music. He was always singing, humming, or whistling. Old Mr. Thomas up the road gave him a mouth organ. His little odd, off-key concerts got better and better with hours of practice. The quiet, cold winter evenings heard many rich, sad melodies from the harmonica of Emmanuel Christmas. 1861 brought the dark clouds of war to Virginia. The call to defend the state from the northern invaders was the only thing that could be talked about. A new company of Virginia volunteers was being formed. They set up their camp less than two miles from the McClaw cabin during the summer of 1862. Manny would fly through his chores and then run to Mr. Mahoney's farm to drink in the excitement of the endless drills and marches. Around the campfire at night, the mellow harmonica of Emmanuel McLaw made the men of Virginia volunteers dream of home and loved ones left behind. He became a favorite of the soldiers. It was Captain Claremont himself who suggested that Manny become the drummer boy. Emmanuel's mind burned with the excitement of marching with the army. The men liked him. He could certainly master the drum, and he could be a brave soldier just like his father. But the thought of his mother, all alone, brought him back to reality. Would she understand why he had to go? Oh, the world that I have left. Ma, I'll only be gone a few weeks. General Jackson says nothing's going to happen. The Federals are across the river waiting for winter. We're just supposed to watch until cold weather sets in. You serve under General Jackson? <coughs> yes, Mom, he's a Christian, like me and you. He won't even fight on Sundays, unless he's cornered. They say he lives by the New Testament and fights by the Old. Some of the men even say he prays during the hottest battles, bullets flying all around him. General Jackson says he's just as safe on a, on a battlefield as he is in his target, as long as God wants him on earth. Oh, please, Mom, let me go. Manuel, 14 years ago, I was all alone in this whole world. <coughs> and God sent me a special gift. That gift I named Emmanuel. Son, do you even know what your name means? Of course, Mom, you tell me all the time. <coughs> Emmanuel means God with us. But, Ma, doesn't it mean that God is with me, just like he is with General Jackson? I'm as important as your general to Jesus, ain't I? Emmanuel Christmas, little rascal. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> now, you'll be home for the birthdays, right? The birthdays? Yes, yours and Jesus. You have got to be home for Christmas. Promise me, son, you'll be home for Christmas. Ma, I'll spend Christmas at home, I promise. Don't worry, there ain't going to be no fighting. Besides, I wouldn't miss Christmas at home for anything.
But there was fighting, serious fighting, desperate fighting. It took place near the little town of Fredericksburg in Virginia. December came. Winter should have halted the armies. Yet General Burnside sent his army of 150,000 over the Rappahannock River to face the well-entrenched Confederates. Ordered to support General Longstreet's Corps, the small company of Virginia volunteers awaited the outcome of the fierce battle. But before the battle was ended, over 18,000 Americans, both blue and gray, became casualties on December 13th, 1862. Among them, a 13-year-old drummer boy from Berryville, Virginia, Emmanuel Christmas McClaw, who was running ammunition to the embattled defenders of the famous stone wall when a great black shell exploded only a few yards away. The grizzled soldiers had earlier been inspired by the young boy's bravery. They were soon shocked to see the mangled drummer boy grimacing in pain with death all around him. Darkness finally put an end to the fighting, but not the suffering. Manny was barely aware of the doctor, smelling of sweat, powder, and liquor bending over him. Boy, 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 can you hear me? I can't. I can't beat the charge, sir. My drum is broken. I can't beat the charge. Save your strength, boy, because I'm going to have to move you. You're, you're a doctor? That's right. I'm a doctor. Then it's over? It's over for a lot of men, boy. Put your arms around my neck, because I've got to move you. No, sir. You'll get all bloody. Do as I say, boy. Now hush. He didn't even know why he bothered. It didn't look good for the boy. The mangled leg would have to be amputated. And even that would be little help against the gangrene he knew would set in before long. In anger, he cursed when he found there was no chloroform for anesthesia. A drink from his bottle braced him for the task ahead. Hey, son. Doc? Listen, boy. You're going to lose this leg. Now, Doc? Yes, now. And we don't have any time to waste. And there's no chloroform to help with the pain. So I want you to drink this. It'll help with the pain. Drink it. No, sir. My mama made me promise to never drink. Yeah, but your mama don't know war, boy. Drink it. I'll be all right without it. This is going to hurt a lot more than you expect it to, boy. My Lord will stand by me now. Oh, you're religious, huh? Jesus is my Savior, if that's what you mean. Boy, you believe anything you want to. Anything you want. It's almost Christmas, sir. Do you know who was born on Christmas? No, boy, who was born on Christmas? It was Jesus, sir. He's called Emmanuel. In the Bible, it means God with us. Jesus is right here with us, Doc. He's going to help us both. I've been praying for you. You pray for yourself if you want to, boy. But I'm way past your Lord's help. Oh, no, sir. Where's the nurse? Nurse, somebody come in here and help me hold this boy down. God is with me. You won't need anyone to hold me. Please, Doc. Well, maybe your God is with you, boy, but he better be more powerful than I think he is. Fifteen minutes. It took fifteen minutes as fast as the hardened doctor could work. Fifteen minutes that must have seemed like an eternity to the boy. Over and over, the boy prayed. Oh, Emmanuel. 
God be with us. Emmanuel, God be with us. Oh, Emmanuel, God be with us. No one knew the doctor, not really, except by reputation. It was said he had no heart. They said he had liquor for blood. But he shook uncontrollably as he finished this operation. Drenched from sweat, he hurried from the hospital tent, hurrying to his own tent, hurrying to the darkness, hurrying to his bottle. He tried to sleep amid the moans of the dying, but his mind was filled with the boy who wanted to spend Christmas at home. The boy's voice echoed in his brain. Emmanuel, God be with us. Oh, Emmanuel, God be with us. Emmanuel, God be with us. Emmanuel Christmas McLaw, the Christmas boy, was not getting any better. The doctor felt helpless against his weakening condition. Special medicines were secured. They had little effect. The boy developed pneumonia. The embittered doctor resented the fact that he wished this boy to live. More than anything, he wished him to live. He found himself checking in repeatedly. Doc, is that you? Yes, son. But don't try to talk now. I have to, doctor. You see, I'm going home soon. That's not possible, boy. You'll be here for several months till you get stronger. Heaven will be my Christmas home. Nonsense, boy. You're going to be fine. No, doctor. The Lord will have me come home. To heaven for Christmas. You don't know him, do you? Who? You mean your Lord? Yes, sir. 
When you were operating on me, I asked Jesus to save your soul. I told you, boy, it's too late for that. You don't know what I've done. No, sir. But God does. That's why he came to earth to die for those sins. The Lord, is, the Lord told me I would see you in heaven. See me in heaven? Now you stop that foolish talk, boy. Hey, what you crying for, little buddy? My mama, she'll miss me. Will you give her my Bible under here, under my pillow? Yes, son. I'll make sure she gets the Bible. Now lie back and try to get some rest. I'm okay, only I can't breathe so good. What's that bright light, Doc? What light you talking about, son? What light you talking about? There, no, no, it's not a light. It's him. Oh, Doc, it's Jesus. Don't you see him? It's singing for him. I'm coming, Jesus. I'm coming home. Jesus, my Savior, is calling to me. Come, child, your struggle is done. He bore my burden on Calvary's tree. Gladly I rest in God's Son. Come unto me, all ye that labor, all who are heavy laden. Come unto me, come unto me, and I will give.
But now, Lord, I believe. Yes, I believe. Oh, Lord, please forgive me for all my sins and save my wicked soul. The long road to Berryville, Virginia, gave the doctor plenty of time to think. He fingered the small Bible in his pocket to see if it was still there, to convince himself that the events of the past few days were real. For the 100th time, he read the inscription to Emmanuel C. McClaw from Elizabeth Frederick McClaw. Even as the wagon jostled over the frozen Virginia roads, he thought of his wife and of home. He prayed his letter would reach her before he arrived. My dearest Elizabeth, I hardly know where to begin. I guess I should start by confessing that the letter you received 14 years ago was forged. No, I wasn't killed in battle. I just wanted you to be free from the likes of me. I've always loved you, Elizabeth. I'm sure by now you've heard of Mount Manny. You'd have been proud, Elizabeth. Hundreds of men have died in my care. But Manny was different. During the worst of his suffering, he was more concerned about me than about himself. Even when he was dying, he was telling me about his Emmanuel. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm so sorry. If you can find it in your heart to forgive me, I'd like to spend Christmas at home. You see, now Manny's God is my God. I was shown the way home by my own son with all my love, Nathan Anderson McLaws.
Well, that concludes the program tonight. They did a great job, didn't they? And uh, give them a hand. That's fine to do that.